Hey there Van Gun Addicts, this is Ken Wilford here at Van again. I just want to do a quick video about replacing the distributor in your Vanagon. And I know sometimes people have problems with their distributors. Um, the Hall effect sensor can go bad. That's over here. This is for this is an 85 Westy that we're currently working on here. Um, and so you start out, you want to make sure you note everything before you take stuff apart, like as far as your wiring order where these spark plug wires hook up okay make sure you note that then you're going to pop this distributor cap off it just has two of these little clips on it just pops off bam okay now you're going to look at your rotor okay usually what i do at this point i take pictures i take a picture of where this is pointing i take a picture of over here where you have your timing marks like there's this slot right here I usually use it to reference things on this car you can kind of see this slots lined up with this I'm not sure if that's actually the correct timing but that's the way the car is set so once you take a few pictures then you unhook stuff it's got a couple of vacuum hoses here that have to come off then on the one nines they have this big vacuum unit back here okay so because of that you have to loosen this timing piece right here, this timing plate. Okay. Loosen that up. Spin this thing back out of the way a little bit. And it's super sunny right now, but right here is this 13 millimeter that's holding this plate to the engine. You just loosen that up. And actually, I did it too much because now it's jamming up against that. Let me tighten it back down a little bit. Usually you can just loosen it to the point where you can take it out with your fingers. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so it's going to be a pain. Right, right, right. Then on this side, okay, once you get that nut out, on this side, if I can show it to you, there's this little plug here. you got to undo the clip, and then you got to just be real super nice to it. I usually try to peel the boot back with my hand. And just pull it off that way because if you don't you can rip the plug you can rip the plug off the side of the distributor you don't want to do none of that stuff this is supposed to just be a pretty simple operation which it really is I know people are gonna get mad at me like you need you need a steady cam or something but whatever we'll get this done in one second back at this stupid nut off that's the most what you call intensive part of it okay so now you can spin this thing around and it just comes straight out okay if I can show you a picture of it without being in my own light when you look down in there that is the hole for the timing gear and you can see it's just a slot and the, the teeth thing on the bottom of the distributor is actually offset to one side see that so it can actually only go in one particular way. All right, so you got it out of there. Now you're ready to put your new one back in. You wanna look down in here, there's a spring down in there. That needs to be there. If that's not there, it's gonna cause problems. So definitely see if that's there. If it's not there, order one for me or something, I'll get you one. All right, here's this one I wanna test. It's a used one. And again, we kind of know that our rotor button was pointing down, I believe. Now, don't ask me what in the world kind of timing situation this thing was in. <laughs> because I'm just letting you know the timing on this is super whack. Like, it's not even close to being right. Let me loosen it up here real fast. I, I mean, my friend Bob Donald's back in the day... Uh, he used to put motors together and then he would put the timing thing in wrong and yeah it was a thing that happened quite a bit and I would have to get on the phone and be like Bob the motor won't start what's happening with the motor I don't know I don't know I did everything's right and it was always you know I just kind of learned it was always a problem with the timing gear being improperly installed but he had like a dyslexia thing about it 
But once you got that done, it was fine. It was a good motor. Okay, so, so we got it pushed back in there. All right, when you get it down in there, it seats all the way down, and then you just mess with your distributor with your rotor. If it's in there good, you can turn it a little bit, but you can't turn it freely. If it's not all the way down in there, seated right, you'll be able to turn it around. Or it'll be pointing in the wrong direction or something. Okay, so now that's back in there. Now you just basically do it reverse. You got to put this 13 millimeter bolt back in here. Then you turn this till it's lined back up to... I'm sorry about these shadows. Oof. It's super hot here today too. You turn this till it's lined up. You know, this little thing was lined up with these halves. Relock this. Plug it back in. Put your cap back on. Hook up these vacuum lines and it's ready to go. So that's basically how to install distributor on an air-cooled Vanagon. They're basically the same. Or 1.9 water boxer. Um, if you do it on a 2.1 it's very similar, except you don't have to mess with that stupid vacuum advance unit, so it's actually even easier. So that's it for today, Vanagon Addicts. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, please visit us on Friday at 5 o'clock for our live stream. But I hope you guys get more spots, miles per gallon with your van, and have a great one.